Welcome to this video. Today I will be walking you through how to remove all viruses, malware, adware, and spyware off of your Windows computer, as well as how to do a full deep clean to help optimize it and help it run more efficiently. Please note that yes, I am doing this on a Windows 10 computer, but this will also work for Windows 8 and Windows 7 users because the steps are the same. I will also be listing all of the steps down below in the notes down in the video description along with timestamps and all important links will also be listed down below so please make sure that you're following along down in the notes. For step number one we're going to run a couple scans to check for any infections on the computer and so if you go down to step number one you want to click on the first link there to run the first scan which will take you to this website which is for malware bytes which is a free anti-malware program. If we come over here to the left hand side we want to do the free download go ahead and download and install it and once you have malware bytes installed just go ahead and close the pop-up window here and first thing you want to do is come over here to settings and then over to the protection tab and just come down here a little ways and make sure the option for scan for root kits is turned on and then also just double check and make sure that right here underneath potential threat protection that both of these are always set to always detect which is the recommended for both of them and then come back over here to the dashboard tab on the left hand column and then over here in the bottom right where it says updates it's going to say the word current just go ahead and click on current just to double check to make sure that the program is up to date with the latest definitions and then once it has finished checking for updates just go ahead and click on scan now now this scan can sometimes go very quick other times it can take a very long time just let it sit until it is fully completed once the scan has completed it will list all of the results if any are found it will tell you how many it found right here just make sure and double check that there is a check mark in all of the boxes and then once you have done that, you can go ahead and click on quarantine selected. If a message like this pops up asking you to restart the computer, go ahead and click on no because we will restart later. Now at this point, you can go ahead and just close malware bytes and then go back down to the notes underneath step one and click on the link for the second scan, which will take you to this page for super anti spyware. This is another free scan that we're going to run. Just go ahead and click on the download free edition and install it. And after you have installed Super Anti Spyware, you will get a window like this one. First thing you want to do is come over here and just double check for updates. Go ahead and click on it, and it will just make sure all the definitions are up to date. And then we can go ahead and click on OK, and then come over here to where it says Scan This Computer. And then we just want to do a complete scan. Same thing as with Malwarebytes, we want to let the scan run. Sometimes it goes very quickly, sometimes it takes a very long time. Just let it sit until it is fully completed. Once the scan has completed, it will list the results if any are found. Just make sure there is an X in all of the boxes. And then when you click on continue, it will prompt you to close all of your web browsers because it cannot remove all of the results if your web browsers are open. So you will have to close them. So you want to click on yes. And then once the results have been removed, you can click on continue and then close super anti spyware. For the third and final scan, we're going to run MZSoft, which is also a free anti-malware program. Again, you'll just want to go ahead and download and install it just like we did with the first two. After you have installed MZSoft, you'll get a window like this. You just want to double click where it says Start Emergency Kit Scanner and then click on Yes. At this point, you want to go ahead and click on Accept and then you'll also want to click on Yes so that way it can update the definitions. And after it has finished updating, go ahead and click on scan. And after you click on scan, also make sure you click on yes to identify PUPs. And then at this point in the middle, select the malware scan option. And then just like before, just let the scan sit and run until it is fully completed. When the scan has completed, you will get a pop-up like this. Just go ahead and click on close, and then it will give you a list of all of the results. Just again, make sure you have a check in every single box. And then after you have verified that, go ahead and click on quarantine or delete. And then once it has completely removed everything, go ahead and close all of the windows you have open. If you get this pop-up, just click close and then close this window. And then at this point is when we want to go ahead and restart the computer. After the computer has restarted, you are ready to move on to step two. 
And step two will have three parts. Basically, we, we will be going through and cleaning out all of the garbage data and optimizing the computer. And if you go down to the notes, there is a link there to click on, which will take you to this page, which is for the free program called CCleaner. You'll just want to go ahead and come right here and download and install it. One thing to note when you're installing CCleaner is on this window, sometimes in the bottom left corner, there will be a little box with a check mark trying to install a third party program. Just make sure that if you have that box here in the bottom left corner that you uncheck it and then click on install. Now, as I already mentioned, part two will have three parts. And so for part A, what you want to do is make sure that you have the cleaning tab or cleaner tab on the left hand side selected. And then also make sure you have the Windows tab selected here at the top. And then for the settings, just make sure that they match what you see here on the screen. And then when you click on applications, what you have on your list will probably be a little bit different because it's going to depend on what you have installed. But basically, just make sure you are not deleting any saved passwords. In fact, I would match the Firefox settings and Chrome settings that I have if you have those options on your applications tab. Same thing with Windows, make sure you are not deleting the saved passwords. And then once you have verified all the settings, you can go ahead and click on Run Cleaner, and this will clean out all of the garbage data. Just go ahead and click on Continue. One thing to note is if you have any web browsers open, it will prompt you to close them, so you will have to click on Yes to continue with the cleaning. Now once CCleaner hits 100% in the top right corner, you will know that it is completed. You'll notice also in the top right corner you can click on show advanced report and it will give you a detailed description of what has been removed. And then once you have finished this, you're ready to move on to part B. So for part B, you'll just come over here to the left hand column and click on registry. And we're going to use this to clean up the registry on the computer. And so we're going to go ahead and click on scan for issues. And then we'll know it's completed once it hits 100% up here in the top right corner. And then we just want to go to the bottom right corner again and click on Fix Selected Issues. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Yes just to back it up. You can go ahead and save and back it up wherever you'd like to do so. I'm just going to use the default, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Save. And then we're going to click on Fix Selected Issues. We can see that we have a total of 79 here that it's going to clean up. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on it now. And then once it has fully completed, I'm going to click on close and I'm going to run it again just because sometimes it doesn't pick up everything on the first scan. So we're just going to run it again just to make sure it found everything. And then you can see on the second scan, we've hit 100% and no results were found. So we should be good to move on to step C. For part C of step two, you want to come over here to tools and then go over here to the startup tab. And this is a list of all the programs that are set to run when you first start up the computer. And so we want to turn these off so they're not running in the background. This will help optimize the computer. And so you could you can basically turn everything off here unless you see something that has to do with your security or if you have something that has to do with an automated online backup, you know, something that has to do with your antivirus, you want to leave that alone. But everything else can be turned off. And so to do so, we just double click on it and we, you can see that it turns to a no. We can also just select an item and then click on disable here on the right hand side and that also sets it to no. But basically we just want to turn all of these off so they're not running in the background. Now this bottom one I do need to keep running so I'm not going to turn that off. But again the more you turn off here the better your computer is going to run because it's not running as much in the background. And I did just realize that this one right here does have to do with my antivirus so I'm going to go ahead and turn that one back on. But other than that, we should be good. Now for Windows 10 users, you will also need to come down here to the bottom left corner and click on the Windows Start button and just type in Settings. And then we're going to go ahead and open up the Settings menu and look for where it says Privacy and click on it. And then if you go down the left-hand column, go down to where it says Background Apps and click on it. And it will give you a list of all the apps that are set to run in the background. And so to further optimize the computer, I would recommend turning all of these off as well. The only exception I'm going to make is this one right here because it has to do with my security. But everything else I'm going to go ahead and turn off. And you can now see that I've turned everything off except for just the one that has to do with my security. For step number three, we need to go through and remove all of the garbage programs as well as all of the bad programs off of the computer. And so to do that, we're just going to come down to the Windows Start button and click on it. 
and then we're going to type in control panel just like that and we're going to go ahead and open up the control panel and then we're going to come over here to where it says programs and click on programs and then we're going to click on programs and features and then here it's going to give us a list of all of the programs that are on the computer. Now we want to clean this up as much as possible. The better job we do here, the better our computer is going to run, as well as it will help minimize the chance of malware getting onto the computer again. And so here are some key pointers as far as what to look for when going through this list. First of all, you will want to remove the programs that we installed earlier. And so make sure to remove CCleaner, remove and uninstall malware bytes, and also remove and uninstall super anti-spyware. MZSoft, the third scan that we ran, does not install the same way, and so it will not show up on this list because you do not have to worry about it. I would also strongly recommend if you see a program on this list and you know that you no longer need or use it, uninstall that as well. And in case you're not aware of this, in order to uninstall a program, just click on it so it's selected, and then an uninstall button will appear up here at the top. You just click on it. Additionally, if you see a program with the word toolbar in it, you have to remove those because all toolbars are bad. They always slow the computer down and often let malware in, so remove all toolbars. If you see any programs that claim to be cleaners or optimization programs, remove and uninstall those as well because more often than not, those are also malware-related programs. And the last tip is if you see more than one antivirus program on your computer showing up on this list, remove and uninstall the extra antivirus program because it does nothing extra to protect your computer. It's only slowing it down. So again, if you see two antivirus programs on this list, remove and uninstall the extra antivirus program. Additionally, if you see something on this list and you do not know what it is and you're not sure if you should remove it or not, go down to the notes below down in the video description and underneath step three, there is a link there to this website called shouldiremoveit.com where it will tell you if you should remove a program or not. All you do is you just simply come here to the search box and type in whatever program you're looking for. And if it comes up with a green rating, you know you can keep it. You know it's a good program. However, if it comes up with a yellow or orange rating or a red rating, you know that you should remove that program. Now, Windows 10 users will also need to come down here to the Windows Start button and click on it and type in Settings. And go ahead and open up the Settings menu and look for where it says uh, apps and go ahead and click on apps. And the reason why is because there are some apps that will only show up on this list that do not show up in the control panel. And so Windows 10 users will need to come here and just double check to make sure there's nothing extra that needs to be removed. If you do see something here that does need to be removed, you just click on it and it will give you an uninstall button to remove it off of the computer. For step number four, we need to go through and do some storage cleaning, and I will get to Windows 7 and Windows 8 users here in just a moment. But for Windows 10 users, go ahead and click on the Windows Start button and type in Storage. And then go ahead and just open up Storage. And here it's going to list all of the drives you have in your computer. I only have one, and it will give you a breakdown as to how much space you have free and how much is being used. And we also have the option to click on it to get a further breakdown as to what is taking up space on our drive. And this is especially useful if you are running low on space. And so, for example, if we had a lot of things in documents, we could click on documents and it will allow us to manage it and delete the documents as needed. But this is a really good tool as far as cleaning out any sort of files, videos, pictures, photos, whatever that's taking up a lot of space. Now the apps we already went through, we just went through that in step number three, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But here you can come and check the other categories that may be taking up space on the computer. Now if we go back, if you are running low on disk space, turning this on is something I would consider. You can also tweak the settings by clicking on this option right here. And then also where it says free up space now, this will give you a list of all the temporary files that are being stored on your Windows 10 computer. I have seen this list get very large. I've seen it in the 20, 30, 40 gigabytes sometimes. Usually it's not that big, but if you've noticed that your computer is suddenly low on space, you may want to come here and check the temporary files. These will get deleted anyways, but if you need to remove them now, you do have that option to do so. 
Now, Windows 7 and Windows 8 users are not going to have as many options, but what you can do is go to the Start menu and type in File Explorer. In fact, on Windows 7 and Windows 8 users, it will actually be Windows Explorer that you need to type in. Uh, but go ahead and open up the Explorer tab. And in this window on the left-hand column, look for where it says Computer. Mine says this PC because I'm on Windows 10, but yours should say Computer. And you want to click on it. And here it will give you a list of all of the drives on your computer. Now, if you right click on one of the drives, I'm just right clicking on the C drive, you can go down to properties and right here there's a disk cleanup option. It's not as informative as the option we just went over in Windows 10. It doesn't give you as many options, but you can go through and do some cleaning here, especially with the temporary files as well as it does give you a breakdown as to how much space you have and how much space is being used. For step number five, we need to go through and clean out the web browsers. And so we're going to start with Google Chrome. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is come up to the top right corner and click on the three little dots to open up the menu and go down to where it says help and then over to about Google Chrome. This will just double check and verify that Chrome is up to date. If yours is not up to date, it will automatically do the update and then it will ask you to restart Google Chrome. Next, you will want to go back to the menu button in the top right corner and go down to where it says more tools. And then from there, click on extensions. And before we do anything here, come up to the top right corner where it says developer mode and click the switch to turn it on. And then come over here to update and click on update. This will just make sure everything's up to date with the extensions. Now, this is a menu of all the extensions you have installed on your Google Chrome web browser. Extensions can be fun, they can be convenient, but they are terrible for privacy and security and they also slow the web browser down. And so I strongly recommend that you remove as many extensions as possible. The only exception I would make is if it has something to do with your password manager. Uh, those you can keep, but everything else I would recommend removing. And so. Here we can see we have something from Pinterest. I'm going to click the remove button and remove it. And then also there's one here that has to do with security. Even though it's a security extension, I would still recommend removing it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you ever see an extension that says toolbar, you absolutely must remove it. All extensions with toolbar in them are bad. And then the password manager here I'm going to keep. But I'm going to disable it by clicking this blue switch. And so we're just going to disable it while it's not in use. If I need it in the future, I can come back here and turn this on. And then these last four are the default extensions included in all Chrome installations. And so I'm just going to disable these as well while they're not in use. Next, we will want to go back to the menu in the top right corner and go down to where it says settings and click on it. And I'm not going to go over every setting here, but just some of the main things that I want to point out is right here where it says show home button. You can turn this option on to add a home button in the top left corner. And here we can also change our home page. This is important to know because if malware was on your computer, it often changes your home page. So if you want to change it, we can go ahead and just type in whatever we want our home page to be. And then also if I go down a little bit farther, right here where it says search engine, if you need to change your default search engine, you just click on this drop down menu to do so. And then also this uh, last category where it says on startup, this is what Google Chrome will do when you first open it. This often gets changed if malware was on the computer as well. And so if you need to adjust this setting, you can do so. For example, I can select this bottom option and type in a specific website that I want to come up uh, when I open up Google Chrome. And you can do this however you want, but those are some main settings that I want to make sure that you know how to do. Next, we're going to do Mozilla Firefox. And so again, we're just going to come up here to the top right corner to open up the menu and go down to where it says help. And then from there, click on about Firefox. Again, this will just verify and make sure Firefox is up to date. If it is not, it will automatically update and then ask you to restart Firefox. And then after you have done that, come back up here to the menu in the top right corner and go down to add-ons. And then just make sure you have the extensions tab selected in the left-hand column. And then before we do anything, click on this gear icon and go to check for updates just to make sure everything is up to date. 
The same rules apply here as with Google Chrome. We, we want to remove as many extensions as possible. The only exception being anything that has to do with a password manager. And so we're going to disable it while it's not in use. And then we're going to remove these other ones. Again, I strongly recommend removing all other extensions. Next, we will want to go back to the top right corner and click on the menu button and then go down to where it says options and click on it. And then just make sure in the left hand column that we have the home option selected. And then right here we can select what our home page is. And so if we need to make an adjustment, we can click on custom URLs and then we can just type in whatever we want our home page to be. I can also go to search in the left hand column and double check the default search engine right here. We just click on the drop down menu and I can change it if needed. I should also mention that if you want to change the Firefox startup options, you'll need to first click on general and then it will just list the options available here up at the top. The last web browser we're going to go over is Microsoft Edge and so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And then we're just going to come to the menu button in the top right corner and then go down to where it says extensions. And then again, same rules apply. We're just going to go ahead and keep our password manager, but we're going to disable it while it's not in uh, use. And then for the second one, we're going to click on this little gear icon. And then we'll go down to the bottom and click on uninstall to remove it. After you have cleared out the extensions, you'll just want to click on the menu button again in the top right corner. And then go down to where it says settings and click on it. And then right here, we can adjust what Microsoft Edge does on startup if we need to do so. We can also go down to the bottom to click on view advanced settings. And then from here, we can adjust the home button if we'd like to do so. We can also change our home page right here by clicking on a specific page. And so I can type in whatever I want my home page to be. And then additionally, if we need to adjust our default search engine, we just have to scroll down until we see right here where it says change a search engine. And you do with Microsoft Edge, you first have to visit the website that you want to change it to. So you notice Google doesn't show up here. So if I come over here and type in google.com and then go back here to the menu, back to settings, back to view advanced settings and then go back down to change search engine you'll see that google is now available to set as default for step number six we need to run an antivirus program and i will be listing links down below in the notes down in the video description underneath step number six to free antivirus programs you can use if you choose to do so just remember never use more than one antivirus program at the same time Regardless, go ahead and open up the antivirus program you currently have on your computer and you'll need to locate the update option to update it. And then once it has updated, go ahead and search for the option to run a full system scan and go ahead and run it. And then just like with the uh, earlier scans, let it run until it's fully completed. Remove any results that are found, if any, and then restart your computer. For step number seven, we need to run a defrag on the computer. And so to do so, we're just going to click on the Windows Start button in the bottom left corner and type in File Explorer. Again, if you're using an older version of Windows, it's going to be Windows Explorer. And then just go ahead and open it up. And then come to the left hand column and look for where it says this PC. Older computers will say computer. And we're just going to click on this PC and look for the C drive and right click on it and go down to properties. And then from here, we want to click on the tools tab and then click on optimize. And from here, we can run the defrag. Now, first thing before anything, come over here to media type and make sure that yours says hard disk. If yours says solid state drive, you do not want to run the defrag you only want to run it if it says hard disk. And so to run it, you just select it and then click on optimize. And it can take a long time. Just let it run until it's fully completed. And then I would also recommend that if you do have a hard disk, turn on a schedule. I would run it just uh, monthly. And then you can choose the specific drives if you'd like to do so and then click OK. But again, only do this step if it says hard disk. If it says solid state drive, 
do not run the optimize or defrag and do not turn on the schedule. For the last and final step, we will need to do a final restart on the computer. So just click on the Windows Start button, click on Power, and then go ahead and restart your computer. Now at this point you are finished and completed. However, if you are still having problems after going through all of those steps, at this point I would recommend that you reset Windows or reinstall Windows. And I do have a tutorial video on how to do that. I will post a link down below in the notes to that video in case you need it. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below and we will respond as quickly as possible. But again, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.